Today I'm going to continue on the learn accessibility by building a quiz on FreeCodeCamp and we're on step 40 now. So as with the other input and label elements, link the text area to the corresponding label element and give it a name attribute. So here's our text area, I want to give it a name uh, and we'll just call this text area and then to link it to the corresponding label. Um, I think it was for text area. Let's just see if that passes. No, it doesn't. Oh, sorry, yeah, we need a ID um, on the text area and that's what we'll, we'll link the two. And the, the name is just different. Um, there we go. Cool. So step 41, don't forget to give your form a submit button. So here, um, where do they want us to put it? Let's see. So yeah, we could just put it down here at the bottom. Um, so we'll do a button and the type will be submit. And we can then close that off like so. Uh, oh, should display the text send. I must not have read that. There we go. So step 42, two final semantic HTML elements for this project are footer and address elements. The footer is a container for a collection of content that is related to the page. And the address element is a container for contact information for the author of the page. So after the main element here, and generally the footers are at the foot of the document so the bottom um, and obviously that let's say this would be a header so that's why the footer goes towards the end um, so we'll do one footer element like so and a nest uh, is it an address element like so and let's check that cool so step 43, once this goes, there we go. Within the address element, um, add the following. So we just want to add all of these. And I'll just check that it should pass, there we go. Step 44, the address element does not have to contain a physical geographical location. It can be used to provide a link to the subject. Wrap around the text free code camp and set its location to this one. Uh, whoops. So I'm going to copy that right bit here and set its location. So I think because it's a link, it's a, an anchor tag. I haven't heard of a location tag before, but might be wrong here. Uh, let's see. And then we'll do the href will be equal to that. Let's check that code. No. Um, wrap the A. Uh, let me just try location. Let's just see. No. Yeah, so it is href. Um, they want us to wrap it around the existing text. So let's just bring out this break. Just. If that changes anything, no, uh, that should be, uh, should wrap uh, anchor tag, which we're doing around the existing text, which I thought we were doing as well here. Okay, let me just reset that and try again. And I'll just do it within here. Like so. And it's got a bit slow now, but yeah, let me just check that. And it should be, we need to give this a href. And I think it should work now. No. Wrapper a element around the existing text free code camp that is what we're doing 
Let me take out the break. There we go. Okay. So yeah, it was just around the text and it seems like it needs to be on one line as well. Um, but it's neither here nor there. So step 45, back to styling the page, select the list of elements within the navigation bar and give them the following styles. So we'll grab those styles and to get the list of elements, um, we can do similar to above. So let's say nav ul and then li. So that's gonna select all the li's and give them those styles. There we go. <clears throat> On step 46, on the topic of visual accessibility, contrast between, between elements is a key factor. For example, the contrast between the text and the background of a heading should be at least 4.5 um, colon 1. Change the font colour of all the anchor elements within the list to something with a contrast ratio of at least 7 to 1. So sometimes you have to sort of look this up and there are some good browser tools um i think axe or wave accessibility and actually i've got one here which is quite good um but yeah generally if you're front end developing you should have a designer <laughs> that will know the the contrast and colors and they'll provide that to you in like a design system or just the sort of figma files for example um but anyway let's just change the um, so all of the anchor elements. So I'm just going to do that same selector. It's not ideal, um, but yeah, just because we're working with pure CSS. And so let's see font. No, it would just be color. Oops. And I'll just set it to black for now. Um, sort of using the keyword, and I think that. Okay, so we just want perhaps the L, I, and A. Okay, so <laughs> they're giving us a hex code here, so I'm just going to use that. Um, I thought black would be dark enough. Or have enough contrast. Oh, okay, sorry, it's white here. Um, or a lighter color, so there we go. So step 47, to make the navigation buttons look more like typical buttons, remove the underline from the anchor tags. So, where is that? Uh, I can't see that on the page anymore. No. Okay, not to worry. Um, so, oh, these are navigation buttons. Sorry, these ones here. So these look like links, but we want to style them as buttons. So that will be nav um, li. I think that's right. And we want to um, remove the underline. So that will be text decoration uh, none. Does that remove it? No. Um, okay, and then let me just check this firstly. So we just need to use LIA. Ah, okay, sorry, we can actually use uh, the tag that we've already got here. So that will be text decoration uh, none, like so. And there we go, we've lost the underline of these. And then we want to create a new tag. So, uh, and that is on the li or navigation list items so li, and this is when is it there? Someone is hovering over, so we can use the pseudo selector of hover, and I think it's just one. Kind of might be two. Let's try one for now, and then we'll come back. Um, you might know already, but yeah, haven't written that for a little while. And set the background dust color and tech uh, and sorry color are switched so let's just see so what do we want so we want that to be background color and then color I guess would be this one which is the background color that right 
uh, this one for the header. Let's just see if that passes. And maybe we need to do that. Okay. <laughs> so we need to do actually nav and then li hover. And sorry, it is one semicolon there. I'm kind of getting a bit messed up there. There we go. I th think that. Um, oh, and of course, we want a cursor of pointer. So now, if we hover over them, you can see the colors invert for background and the text color, and we've got this pointer um, mouse cursor rather than the um, sort of arrow one. So let's check that. There we go. Cool. <laughs> Need to brush up on CSS, I think, a little bit there. So step 48, tidy up the header using Flexbox to put space between the children and center them, vertically center them. Um, then fix the header to the top of the viewport. So we'll do display effects as we've got it here. Um, we want to space between, so that'll be justify content space dash between and align uh, items center, and that's the vertical alignment. And then to fix the header to the top of the viewport, um, I believe we can do um, position fixed like that. And uh, so fix, but we also want a top of zero. Maybe it's just top zero that will fix it, but there we go. Cool. And finally, for this one, step 49 when the screen width is small, the H1 does not wrap its text content how it should. Uh, so there we go, you can see it's not wrapping. And um, uh, align the text for H1 elements in the center. Um, then give the main padding such that student info section header can be fully seen. So what do we want to do here? So align the text for the H1 element in the center. So what we can do is text, um, I think it's text align. Let's have a look, center. And then give the main padding as such. And we'll just give it 50 pixels for now, just to see how that's looking. And then student info header can be fully seen. There we go. Let me just check that. Um, and we only need to give it padding top. So let's try that again. And there we go. So you can see there's some padding between them. Cool. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. And I'll see you in the next one.